the question of Brother Yahya is that today we talked about Al Imam Al Ismaili, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, criticizing Abu Abdullah for putting this hadith as the second hadith in the chapter which we entitle The Beginning of Revelation. Brother Wahi he said that last time that we came together on the very first lesson that we had at the first hadith that Al-Bukhari put in his book was verily the deeds are by intention verily you will get that based upon your intention so we said at that time that the people who criticized Al-Bukhari criticized him for that hadith because they said what is the connection between the intentions of a man and making hijrah What's the connection of that hadith with the name of the chapter, which is the beginning of Revelation? And we said that what Al-Bukhari had did was he put that hadith there because he had some of the major scholars of Mecca and some of the major scholars of Quraysh. And that in the hadith was his sheikh Abdullah ibn Zubay al-Humaydi, who was the best scholar that Al-Bukhari took hadith from in Mecca and in the hadith was Umar Ibn Al-Khattab also a scholar from Mecca and in the hadith was Muhammad Ibn Ibrahim al-Tain and Ibn Sufyan Sufyan Ibn Uyayna who was from Mecca so we said that the reason why he made this the first hadith was because this hadith had something to do with the Islam. Today's hadith, the second hadith, which was the hadith of how the revelation came to the Prophet and he described, Bukhari put this hadith in there because in the second chain of narration we have some of the major people from Medina. So Al Ismaili's criticism was what's the connection between this hadith and the name of the chapter? The name of the chapter is how the revelation began. Not what the Prophet talked about in the Hadith. He talked about how the revelation came to him. The revelation, the man said, كَيْفَ يَأْتِكَ الْوَحْيِ How does the revelation come to you? And he said, it comes to me in the form of a bell ringing and in the form of an angel taking on the characteristics of a man and so forth and so on. You understand? You understand, Yahya? No, that's it. That's all she wrote, huh? That's all she wrote. It's that simple. Okay, I'll say it again. About the second one, right? All right. In both hadith, the first and the second hadith, the connection of these two hadith with this chapter that Al Bukhari has, the chapter of how the revelation began. That's the name that Al Bukhari gave. When he wrote his book, the first chapter he called it. The chapter of how revelation began. The revelation from Allah. So the first hadith he brought was verily the deeds will be judged by your intention. And the second hadith that he brought was the hadith that we dealt with today. Which was the hadith of how the revelation came to the Prophet. So Al-Ismaili and other than him, they criticized him, Imam Al-Bukhari. And their criticism was what? They said, listen Al-Bukhari, you name this chapter how the revelation began. So in the first hadith, you put a hadith talking about the deeds and the niyyah. What's the connection between that hadith and the name of the chapter? And the second hadith, which is talking about how the revelation came to the Prophet. The Prophet described, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how the revelation came to him. So Al-Ismaili said, this hadith shouldn't have been put there. Because it's talking about how the revelation came to the Prophet. But the name of the chapter is, how the revelation began. So I'll give you an example. In the book or the chapter of Al-Jihad. In the book or the chapter of Al-Jihad. In Sahih Bukhari. There's a hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَعَدَّ لِلْمُجَاهِدِينَ مِئَةِ الدَّرَجَةِ بَيْنَ كُلِّ دَرَجَتَيْنِ كما بين السماء والأرض 
Al-Bukhari quotes this hadith on the authority of Anas ibn Umani. In the book of Jihad, the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily Allah has prepared for the Mujahideen 100 levels of paradise. And each level, the distance between each level is like the distance between the heavens and the earth. So the distance from this earth to the next heaven, there are 100 of those. Let's just say for the sake of argument, Al-Bukhari takes this hadith, which is in what chapter? What chapter? Chapter Jihad. He takes this hadith and he puts it in the chapter of Ghusl. When you read that, you say, what's the connection between this hadith and Ghusl? There's no connection. So this is what Al-Ismaili is saying. He's saying, why would you name the chapter how the revelation began? And then you put this hadith in it which talks about how the revelation came to the Prophet Wasallam. So you've done wrong, Al-Bukhari. So the answer to Al-Ismaili's criticism is the chain of narration, I mean the method or the actual speech of the hadith, which has a connection to the Ba'a because it's talking at least about revelation. Not like the first hadith. At least it's talking and it's mentioned in revelation. But the reason why Bukhari brought this second hadith was because in the chain of narration, the men, there are those people from Medina. So the first hadith, the chain of narration, are the people from Mecca. And the second hadith, the people from Medina. So Al-Bukhari wanted to do what? Since the revelation began in Mecca, and then in Medina, I'm going to do these two hadiths like that. This is from the fiqh of Al-Bukhari. Okay. What we said exactly was that Imam Al-Bukhari, some of the ulama, like Al-Hakim, like some of the ulama from Al-Maghrib, they said, that the Sahih Muslim is better than Sahih Bukhari. And we said, yes, that's true if what you mean by that is that an Imam Muslim brings every single hadith dealing with that issue and he puts it one after another in the same chapter. So he put every hadith and every narration that's dealing with this one issue and it's similar in this one chapter. Whereas Al-Bukhari will put it here and here and there and there based upon what? The understanding that he gets from this hadith. There's a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said. مَثَلُكُمْ وَمَثَلُ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِينَ كَمَثَلُ الرَّجُلُ إِسْتَأْجَرَ أُجَرَى فَقَالَ لَهُمْ مَنْ يَعْمَلْ لِي مِنَ الْفَجْرِ إلى طلوع الشمس على قراءة قراءة قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فعملت اليهود ثم قال ومن يعمل لي من الظهر إلى العصر على قراءة قراءة فعملت النصارى ثم قال ومن يعمل لي من المغرب من العصر إلى أن تغرب الشمس قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأنتم هم فقالت اليهود والنصارى ما بالنا أكثر عمل وأقل عطاء قال الرجل هل ظلمتكم من حقكم شيئا قالوا لا قال ذلك فضلي أؤتيه من أشاء البخاري brings this hadith in his book this hadith says that the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily the example of this community, you Muslims, and the example of the communities or the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, listen to this example. Verily the example of you people, this Ummah, and the example of the Jews and the Christians is like the example of a man who said, Who will do some work for me from Salat al-Fajr, time of Fajr, until the sun comes up. The Prophet said, so the Jews agreed to work. Then he said, and who would do some work for me from Zuhr time until after Asr? So the Prophet said, that the, Jew, that the Christians work. The first people work for one Qirat, which is a form of measurement. The second people work for a, form, for a Qirat, which is a form of measurement. Then the man said, who will work for me from 
Salat al-Asr to Salat al-Maghrib for two qira. He said, you people are those people. So the Jews and the Christians said, what's wrong with us? We did the most work and we get the least reward. The man said, did I oppress you from your right? They said, no, you gave us what we agreed to. He said, then that's my bounty. I give it to whoever I want to give to. Listen to that. You got the hadith? The hadith is showing us what? The hadith is showing us that the Jews, they had the majority of the Anbiya. I made a mistake. The saying of the hadith is from Salat al-Fajr until Zuhr time. And not from Fajr until the sun comes up. From Salat al-Fajr until Zuhr time. If you look at the time from Fajr until Zuhr, it's the majority of the time for Salat. There are maybe eight hours. Gotta follow, gotta pay attention. There are about eight hours between Fajr and Zuhr time. And then from the time from Zuhr to Asr is only about three hours, four hours. And then the time from Asr to Maghrib is the shortest time. So, the Yahud had the majority of the Anbiya. Ibrahim, uh, Ishaq, Yaqub, uh, Yusuf, Suleiman, Dawood, Musa, Yunus, Yusha, uh, how many? Isa. They had a lot of Anbiya. A lot from Bani Israel. So that's designated by that long period of time. And then the Christians had less. They only had Isa and Maryam. Only. And they worked less than the Yahud. The Yahud got one Kira. And they got, had the most time to work. And the Jews, the Christians, had less than them. And then this Ummah, has less time, but we get two qirat, more reward. You got the, you picture the hadith? Al-Bukhari, where did he put this hadith? He put this hadith in the times of salah. Because it's dealing with those salahs where the Prophet mentioned about salah. Al-Bukhari put this in the Kitab of Bay, the book of buying and trading. Because the man is hiring those people. Al-Bukhari put, Bukhari, Shaykh al-Islam. Al-Bukhari puts this hadith in the uh, virtues of the Prophet because he's talking about the Prophet Musa and Isa and Muhammad Al-Bukhari puts this book in the book of Raqaiq to make your heart soft can you read that? you say mashallah so all those places that he puts that hadith it has a connection to that hadith and he does this a lot the black lady who used to sweep the masjid when she died Bukhari and the Prophet said, Where's the woman who used to sleep, sleep in Masjid? They said, She died yesterday. So the Prophet said, Why didn't you people tell me? He went to a grave and he made Salat al Janazah over her. Al Bukhari puts this hadith in the book of Janazah, Salat al Janazah, that you can pray another time, even if it was prayed over, you can pray again over the dead body. Al Bukhari puts this hadith in the Manaqat, the uh, virtues of the Prophet. Showing his humility, he's going to take the time out to go to this woman who swept the masjid. Al Bukhari puts this hadith in the Itikad because this woman used to live in the masjid. Al Bukhari puts this in the book of the Masajid because she was taking care of the masjid. So this is the fiqh, this is what we're saying about when Bukhari brings the name of the chapter, that's where you get the fiqh of Bukhari when you want to know. If Bukhari sees this thing as being haram or halal, it's dependent upon what he says in the chapter. Allahu Alam. Yeah, he said that. We, we said that, like he just mentioned, there was a difference in opinion, and we said that this was the ijtihad of Abu Abdullah, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and we can take that ijtihad, or we can leave that ijtihad, it's not revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the Prophet saying that, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ is a surah of the Qur'an. Or the ayat of Qurti is the greatest ayat in the Quran. This is wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has to be accepted. And we said that because it was ijtihad, other people also had ijtihad and they said that it was a quarter. So the brother's question as to how is the connection of verily one of your creations is brought in the stomach of his mother 40 days like this, 40 days like that, 40 days like this. First of all, I don't even remember if that's the hadith. 
And if it is the hadith, I don't remember what was the connection. So Allahu Alam, Allah knows best. Uh, in, in the Sahih of Al Imam al Tirmidhi, there is an authentic hadith that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, said, if I was invited to that which Yusuf, rahimallahu Yusuf, may Allah have mercy upon Yusuf, but verily if I was invited to that which he was invited to, I would have accepted the invitation. I was saying that Ibn Qutayba, the author of this book, Ta'wil Mukhtalif al Hadith, he brings this hadith and other hadith similar to it to explain. And there's another book similar to this, and it's a hadith, it's a book written by Al Imam al Tahawi, the Hanafi man who has the Aqidah Tahawiya. He also wrote a book called Al Mushkil, Mushkil al Asar where he does the same thing. Mushkil from the word Mushkila. Those things that when you hear them, they cause a problem on your mind. Mushkil al Asar The problems of the Asar, the Ahadith. Anyway, the point was, when we hear this authentic Hadith about Yusuf, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, we find that the average person who hears this Hadith for the first time the thing that comes to their mind is what? The woman who invited Yusuf to have Zina with him when she أغلقت الباب وقالت هيتلك She locked the door and said Come here, come to me And we all know the hadith Now In our aqidah The aqidah of Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jamaah, The Salaf were of the opinion that the Anbiya and the Rusul, our Aqidah to believe they cannot and they do not make major sins. So anytime we read something that we don't understand and it seems like they're doing something, there's some explanation for it. Whether you know it or not, you know that automatically I don't know about the book that will Mukhtalif al-Hadith and I don't know about the book Mushkil al asar but I know Yusuf didn't try to make Zina. And I know that the Prophet, who's the best of the Anbiya, if Yusuf didn't do it, I know he wouldn't do it. That's my Aqidah, whether I know the answer or not. So the answer to the question, to this Hadith, the understanding of it, is that when Yusuf was locked up, two people in the prison saw in a dream. You know the story, one said he saw himself squeezing grapes, and the other one said that he saw some birds eating from his head and he was crucified on a cross. So they said, give us the ta'wil of this, ru'ya, and kuntum in al-sadiqeen. Give us the truth of this thing that, these dreams, if you're really from the truthful. So he said, your fool will not come to you except that I will tell you the ta'wil, the tafsir of what you've seen. The reason why Yusuf said, he connected their food is because you're in prison you don't know what time it is you know time by the meals you get so when your meal comes I'll tell you at that time so before the meal came he said Ya sahib al-sijn arbabu mutafarrakun khayrun amillah al-wahid al-qahar oh my two companions of the prison First thing he started calling them to was the Dawah of the Tawheed. Oh, my two companions of the prison. Who is better? These many gods that you have or Allah, Al-Wahid, Al-Qahar. And this is why we tell the people, look, let us not start with Jihad. Let us not start with the Khilaf. Let us not start with anything other than what the Anbiya, all of them start with in the Quran. All of them. You'll find them all saying, Ya Qawmi, Abdullah, Malakum min ilahi min dut min ghayri. Oh, my people, worship Allah, you don't have any God other than Him. All of them said this one after another. So while Yusuf is in the prison, he gives them doubt to Tawheed, then he gives them the tafsir of their dream. He says, as for you, this is your situation, and as for you, this is your situation. So he said to him, the one who he thought, فَقَالَ لِلَّذِي ذَنَّ أَنَّهُ نَاجٍ مِّنْهُمَا اذْكُرْنِي عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ 
So he said to the one who he thought was going to be saved, mention my name to your Lord, to the king. So he left. فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانِ Shaytan made him forget to mention him to the king. So Musa Yusuf was in a prison for some time. So the king has a dream. سَبْعَ بَقَرَاتٌ He sees seven cows. يَأْكُلُهُنَّ Seven cows are being devoured by seven stalks of grain and love. So he says to his people, Give me the interpretation of this dream if you people know interpretation of the dream. They call his dream strange, crazy dreams. They say, we don't know the interpretation of that mess. The one who was in prison said, I know one. I know one who will tell you the dream. Send me. Just send me to him. So they sent him to Yusuf. He goes to Yusuf and what did he say? Yeah, Yusuf. Yeah, are you a Sadiq? <laughs> oh, Yusuf. Oh, my friend. You know, forgot him in the prison all that time. This is the human being. Huh? He call on you when he needs you. And then when he comes, Ah, oh, yeah, Sadiq. Yeah, you having all these problems, nowhere to be found out. But when he needs something, he comes to you. But also we understand from that, Akhi, that this man who was a kafir saw the importance of addressing the people of knowledge with respect. Addressing them with respect. Not like these people, Mejani, crazy people. Ulema, Murjia, Ulema, Kufa, Ulema, Ulema. They are agents and all that kind of stuff. So he gave him the dream. Yusuf told him the interpretation of the dream. Now, does Sadiq mean friend also in Arabic? Not a marriage, just to us. Habba, habba, one by one. Does Sadiq, yes or no, mean friend in Arabic as well? Ah, ah, now. The brother, what he said was right. It means truthful. Abu Bakr Sadiq. Now. The truthful one. So now, Jazakallah Khairiyasa. So now, the people go back to Yusuf, the king, said, Go get him out of the prison. Bring him to me. So when the guy went to the prison to get him out, he said to them, Irja, Ira Rabbi. Fas al ma balu niswa leti katsana idiyahuna. Go back and ask your Lord, what is the condition of the women who cut their fingers? What is the condition? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said after that, فَلَبِثَ فِي السِّجْنِ بِدْعَةِ And after that, he stayed in the prison some more time from three to nine years. بِدْعَةِ mean is not clear. From three to nine years extra. And he was free. And you know the rest of the story. The Prophet ﷺ was saying, had I been invited to that, I'd have left the prison, especially in light of the fact that I was innocent. So he was trying to raise the stature and the honor of Yusuf as he always did with the other prophets. When the man said to the Muslim, the Muslim said, I swear by he who sent Muhammad with the Haq. The Yahudi said, I swear by he who sent Musa with the Haq, and Musa's better than Muhammad. The Muslim slapped him. He went to the Prophet and complained. The Prophet said, why you slap him? He said, because of what he said, the Prophet ﷺ told us, لا تفضلوني على, يو, على موسى Don't put me above Musa. For verily, the home will be blown and everything will fall out. And then the home will be blown and I'll be the first to wake up and when I get up, I'll see Musa already woke, holding the throne of Allah. And I don't know if he was exempt from going out because he went out when he asked Allah to manifest himself. Or, and I don't know whether he was just raised before me. So he did that with a lot of the Anbiya. They came to the Prophet and they called him. Uh, they asked him, who is the Akram and Nas? Who is the most generous of the people? Who has this Karam, Kareem? They asked him, who was the most, who was the best people? Who was the best person? They asked him, who was the best person? And he said, Yusuf Al Kareem Ibn Al Kareem Ibn Al Kareem Ibn Al Kareem Yusuf, the son of the generous, the son of the generous, Yusuf's father Yaqub. 
and he was the son of the Jinnin. Uh, Ishaq, who was the son of the Jinnin, Ibrahim. So he always took these prophets up. So that's the meaning of it, of that hadith. And not the um, woman. Aywa? Aywa? That's it? Now, uh, listen, the brother made a very important point. The ayah, the ayah is, Ya ayyuha siddiq, with the dal has a tashdeed. Right? If you don't make this tashdeed, the meaning can change. Siddiq. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Hmm. And this is a very important uh, point, and what he said is the haq, it is correct. We'll speak about it. Now? Now. Sahib Ibadah, Sahib Fadl wa Ibadah, walakinahu la yadri, يحدث بأي شيء ماذا يخرج من رأسه هو إنسان قال شعبة ابن الحجاج وهو من الذين لقب بأنه أمير المؤمنين في الحديث قال لأن أذني لأن أذني أحب إلي من أن أروي أن هؤلاء هذا كلام من شعبة ابن الحجاج عالم كبير هذا عالم الحديث لأن أذني أحب إلي من أن أروي عن هؤلاء ابن مندى صاحب الكتاب الإيمان ابن مندى عالم كذلك محدث قال إذا سمست في الحديث حدثنا فلان الزاهد فاغسل يدك منه إذا سمعت في الحديث حدثنا فلان الزاهد فاغسل يدك منه يعني ان هذا الانسان ما عبادته وفضله ما شاء الله هذا شيء طيب ولكنه لم يتفقه ولم يحفظ ولم يفضل العلم ولذلك تركوه نعم جمال جمال الدين جملك الله يا رسول سيرة الان how do we make the tawfiq or the harmonization between this hadith, which it seems to be what they call al hafar you know? This hadith in hafara. It seems to be that the Prophet ﷺ only mentioned two ways revelation came to him. By way of the jarrah that came to him and the way of Jibril coming in the form of a man. But there are so many other authentic hadith like going to come next week, inshaAllah, the hadith of Aisha, when Jibreel came and grabbed him, hadith that there were some sahabas who were sitting there and the revelation came and Umar al Khattab said he heard the humming of bees as Ibn Abi Dunya has, trans- has transmitted to us. Also, what about the revelation that he received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly when he went to the heavens and he got the salat and he saw the people who were making riba and he prayed with the MBA as the Imam al Azam and so forth and so on. So there were a number of ways that the revelation came. Sahabas who were sitting there and the revelation came and Umar al Khattab said he heard the humming of bees as Ibn Abi Dunya has, trans- has transmitted to us. Also, what about the revelation that he received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly when he went? to the heavens and he got the salat and he saw the people who were making riba and he prayed with the anbiya as the imam al azam and so forth and so on. So there were a number of ways that the revelation came to Abu Qasim sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. So we gave the explanation that those other ways came insha'Allah wallahu alam after the question. That's one interpretation, you, and that seems to be the best one. That the, uh, the, 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 there was other ways were after this question. 
But also, if you really took the time out to really contemplate, a lot of those other ways that came can be connected to one of these two ways that he mentioned. The ringing of the bees, the buzzing of the bees can be similar to the bell. The prophet hears a bell which sounds like the humming of bees to you. You understand? It's like a bell to him and it sounds like the humming of a bee to you. The fact that... Uh, what else? What was some of the other things? Anyway, the ulama basically, there are those people from the ulama who said, who tried to connect each way to one of these two. That's another interpretation. And thirdly and lastly, another interpretation is that the two that he mentioned, the bell and Jibril coming, were the two that used to happen most of the time. So he, I don't know how you translate, ikhtafa. How you translate that? Ikhtafa bi zikr hadin. He found that this was enough to mention. He was satisfied with these two things. You know, but there's a better word, but I don't know how to translate that well. You know? So there are three. He found it sufficient to mention these two. So those are three interpretations. But because of the dharr, we leave this stuff out, uh, because you have to hurry up. And you have to leave a lot of things out. You know, because you don't want to be father. You don't want to be... So those three, right? The one we said, which was? That that happened after. La, 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 what he said. He found it sufficient. And the second one is almost all of them. You can connect them to one of the two. You can connect them to one of the two. And finally, the third one is that those two things that he mentioned is what happened most of the time. That's it. Shabab. Okay. Now, now huh? Uh, the Mursal Hadith, the Marasil of the Sahaba. Mursal is um, Mufrat, singular. And Marasil is the plural. That's why you find a book by Abu Dawood. That's such a study, you know, an imam, Abu Dawood, the Sunan, the Sunan Abu Dawood. He has a book called Marasil. It's well known. Marasil Abi Dawood. Anyway, the Mursal hadith of the Sahabi is a hadith in which the Sahaba is not narrating on the Prophet. I mean, one of the Sahabas did not witness what happened, but he's narrating the hadith on the Prophet. Like Aisha did in this situation. The people who you find doing this a lot are the people who are from the young Sahaba, like Ibn Abbas, who made Hijrah and he was a young man. So he narrated a hadith in which he said that the Prophet ﷺ married our mother Maymuna during Hajj time. And we know you can't get, you can't get married while you're a mah- muhrim, while you're a muhrim, not a mahram for the woman. So they said a lot of the hadith of Ibn Abbas are Muslim. Because he couldn't have seen, and he couldn't, he's a little kid. How is he going to be talking about that? Usam ibn Uzayd, similar to him. Anas ibn Malik, similar to him. These small sahabas. But the thing is, some of the ulama rejected them. Because they felt that maybe this sahaba is narrating on a tabi. For an example, you may find a tabi who's just as old as the sahaba is. It's like one of us who may have an uncle who's younger than him. So, some of them rejected it. But, the majority of them accepted it because when you look at all of the hadith available and you look at all of the potential people who could have done this, you don't find them narrating on tabi'een. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. So, it's acceptable. And this is one of the special features of the hadith. So, Allah, I tell you, Allah, 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 uh, say Wallahi al-Azim because Ajimi not Arab because I'm 30 years old 31 because I've only been a Muslim for 8 years it's impossible to teach from say Bukhari from this and really really be Muslim you know but if we had the opportunity to get some ulama here or some big tulab al I mean real people Allah, I think we can uh, really move this thing. But, you know, as the rule in the school of Fiqh tells us, ما لا يدرك جله لا يترك كله If you can't do all of some, if you can't do most of something, you don't leave it all because you can't do You know what I'm saying? The rule is, if you can't do 
all, uh, some of it or the majority of this, then don't leave all of it. Mean it now. We do the best that we can. Because there's no scholar or no big, big talib al ilm, we say, well, we're not really going to get all of, a lot of benefit, so we don't even do it. No. We do what we can do. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the i'ana, for the help and the nafr and, and the sadad and the maghfirah.